Sheila Vinaka and welcome to Talk Business and a big hello as well to our viewers across the region receiving us through Sky Pacific. On the show this week, we travel to Navua to bring you the story of our very own ginger factory. From farming to harvesting to processing, right down to the end products of ginger confectionery. Join us as we take you on a journey through the ginger farms and show you just how ginger lollies are produced. That's all coming up in the next half hour. It was the early 1900s when ginger was introduced in Fiji. The herbaceous perennial plant actually originated from Southeast Asia many centuries ago. Here at home, ginger is widely consumed domestically and its cultivation dates back to indentured labor days where planting material was introduced from India. Not too long after, commercial production began mainly led by Chinese farmers and by the mid-70s, Fijian growers entered the industry. It was then when Fiji's exports of green ginger to the United States began, setting the tone for the establishment of the Fiji ginger industry. Fast forward to 2013 and not many farmers continued to toil the land for ginger cultivation. But those who still do have struck it lucky. Only last year, the Australian government allowed the export of fresh ginger from Fiji after 10 long years of lobbying with quarantine authorities. The decision now paves the way forward for a major three-year ginger revitalization plan and the possibility of exporting around 830 tons a year. This is the stimulus farmers need to nurture the interest in ginger farming. Talk Business caught up with one farmer who knows exactly how ginger is farmed and has vast experience when it comes to cultivating the crop. Ethika Vundinembola manages this ginger farm in Navua and ensures every year there is a good harvest. But it's not as easy as he explains. We have to do a good land preparation. Uh, at least uh, plow four times, yeah, and uh, then uh, make the line uh, uh, me, uh, with uh, make the last uh, plow will uh, then uh, make the rotavita. Before that, the uh, dead plow, we have to spread the chicken manure. Yes, uh, about uh, one thousand uh, bag per acre. Now, ginger is not like your local ordinary root crop that many are accustomed to. Here at home, ginger is harvested twice a year, either as baby ginger in mid-February or mature ginger in mid-July. For uh, baby ginger, it's uh, four to five months. Yeah. And mature ginger? Mature ginger... Uh, About uh, 10 months. Ginger loves a sheltered spot, filtered sunlight, warm weather, humidity, and rich and moist soil. What else do you expect from a tropical plant? What ginger can't stand is frost, direct sun, strong winds, soggy, and waterlogged soil. That's why farmers need to grow ginger in dry land and ensure their fields have proper drainage, especially so for a wet town like Navoa. Uh, that's uh, one of our major setbacks, uh, weather. Yeah. Sometimes uh, heavy rain, sometimes you get flood. Just like most plants, ginger is also prone to pesticides. Nematodes are similar to a disease that can ruin entire ginger farms. That's why ginger seedlings must be treated before it's planted. This will ensure farmers like Ethika reap a good harvest. About uh, 15 ton, 15 ton per acre. We sometimes get uh, 20, and the most is 25 ton per acre. How, how do you increase production? How can you increase it to 20, 25 tons? Uh, depends on the weather, yes. If we have the weather, then we can uh, have a good harvest. This is exactly what makes ginger such a lucrative crop to invest in. Currently, farmers receive 90 cents per kg 
for ginger, while other root crops like cassava fetch 70 cents a kilo. Uh, for the last uh, few years, uh, we've been uh, uh, the weather was a bit uh, not our, on our side, eh? Yeah. So we have to harvest uh, early by uh, from uh, December, January. Depends on uh, when the when the ginger start to get uh, yellow, so we have to pull it out. The biggest market for local producers is Kaming Agro, the Navua-based ginger factory. Kaming Q is the man steering the revitalization of the ginger industry by supplying a steady market for the crop. And he's literally reaping a harvest, where seeds were sown in faith. That's because he took a gamble on ginger. At first glance, he doesn't spot the whole rugged farmer look. But then again, that's highly stereotypical. Because while he may not have extensive background in farming, this man knows the mechanics of plowing the land and making it rain. And it all started back in 1996, when he first came to Fiji and fell in love with our natural surroundings. There's a potential for the agriculture sector in Fiji because it's untouched land. While nowadays, people always worry about their food, what they eat. So their food, like the vegetable or the root crops, you know, all those things coming from one unpolluted land is always welcome, very popular in the world. That's how I see the potential. Three years later, he turned his dream into reality and sowed the first seed in his eight-acre farm. He started with ginger and slowly moved into planting dalo and cassava. And as he expected, his business grew tenfold. By year 2002, we have about 200 acres of land to plant all the root crops mainly. But since we are doing the commercial farming, so we found the uh, difficulty to sell our, you know, our crops you know, at one, one stage. So from there, we are looking for some buyers overseas to start with our export business. Fortunately, in year 2006, you know, we found you know, one ginger buyer overseas, so the ginger people. So from there, we started to export our semi-processed ginger to Australia and New Zealand. However, margins from frozen and fresh dalo and cassava exports weren't all that good. So Kaming decided to focus all his energy on ginger production. And we like to look at some new market for the, uh, some different products, like the ginger. Well, in ginger in Fiji, not many people do it. And we found that there's a potential in the ginger. Because Fiji ginger got a very good reputation, both in the US and in the Europe. Europe. Because, uh, as I said, Fiji was unpolluted, sunny weather, and uh, the way you know we cultivate our crop, you know, a lot of crops were planted, were maintained in an organic way, so have a very good reputation. Mm -hmm. That's why I went to the ginger, and uh, right now our main export was the ginger, either the semi-processed or finished products. Uh, but also we are looking at the fresh ginger export to Australia and the uh, US. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the Australian fresh ginger market is open to Fiji from this year. Right now we are working with the Biosecurity Fiji to, and a farmer to work out our pathway. So the AQIS, Australian Quarantine, going to visit this factory in August, first week of August and it gave us the green light to export the fresh ginger to Australia. But while he began to export to our close neighbours, it was still a small operation. What Kaming needed was proper facilities in order to meet biosecurity requirements. Enter the Increasing Agricultural Commodity Trade or IACT program. We built this uh, factory in year 2009 completed in year 2010, March. So the Prime Minister commissioned this and also we got a very good assistance coming from European Union, the IACT. They sponsored us a lot of uh, equipments 
and some technical support too. The IACT program is a European Union funded project aimed to strengthen economic integration in 15 countries. The idea behind this project is to help the 15 countries improve their trade capacity in enhancing agriculture, forestry, and aquaculture exports. And we do the business plan, you know, we do it with them. When they apply for support or assistance uh, through this uh, project, they came up with their own business plan. Yeah, so we sit down uh, with our input and we work out one that is best for them from where they are to raise up to the next level. Risks are slightly higher when you're at the mercy of the elements. It's something Kaming had to learn the hard way. Before I started, I didn't see the risk in agriculture sectors. I only see the potential. But after I get in, yes, I did see the um, risk there, particularly in Fiji with so many uh, cyclone and flood. A few years we had a big loss in the farm. So this is going to you know, pressure us to have to re reallocate some of our farms to a bit higher ground, not only on the flood. Before like when we started, we put all our farm on the flood. And the reason being is we want to do the mechanic, you know, mechanized farming. So now we have a good ratio, some land in the flood, some land in the, uh, on the higher ground. So we try to manage the risk. Risk are there, you can't get rid of it, but you have to cope with it. Helping commercial ventures make the transition to export-oriented businesses is what IEC is all about. The program provides a level of technical assistance as well as equipment procurement. Our distributors overseas, they're going to require the accreditation, like the ISO 22000 has up. So I act give us a lot of uh, assistance on this, like the uh, staff training and the provide the fund for the training and uh, bring the consultancy, all those things. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate that. So with the assistance from I act last year, this factory was HESAP certified. And uh, right now, because we want to go into uh, some other uh, market, new market, the clients, they want a bit of higher accreditation, like the ISO 22000. So IACT is also assist assisting us on this. But of course, managing a business has its own challenges. For agro-based businesses, it gets a whole lot tougher, especially when you're export-oriented. Kaming will easily tell you why. The finance, this is the one on the menu. And the second is the supply chain. And the third is your staff training. You know, to be prepared to make that kind of product, they should be professional. So this is all the challenge we, um, we were encountering in, in the past few years. And uh, fortunately, we the uh, assistance from the government and assistance from IACT, European Union, so we overcome all those you know, problems one by one. Still, there are a lot of challenges ahead, but uh, we are going toward that. The uh, main concern for the AQIS is the lamotode, the disease, the lamotode and the yam scale. So we are trying to work in a way of you know, transparency from the farm to the pack house and uh, processing, grading, to the packaging, then to the airport. How are we gonna handle those ginger to get rid of those disease and uh, to avoid the contamination during the processing and the transport? Even IACT, which specializes in addressing these issues, say it's no easy task. Uh, especially the fresh produce, yeah. Uh, we like to develop fresh produce and also the processed food, yeah. In order to get into those markets, the quality is very important. And also the supply consistency, you know, because there are many smaller uh, holder farmers, there are many, and they are uh, uh, distributed unevenly. It's really hard. It's really hard when these small islands just produce, say, virgin coconut oil or coconut sugar in the Kiribati, and we have coffee uh, in uh, Vanuatu and uh, Papua New Guinea. You know, these small producers, 
in, or, in order to get into the market, you really have to have that big volume, but we really have to work out what sort of uh, transport arrangement uh, that is suitable to get these products uh, uh, across. Despite the somewhat overbearing challenges, IACT has been successful in reaching out to businesses and making them grow. We are working with, uh, as I said, with government, with the private sector, and also with the foreign missions, identifying the market and also the trade offices uh, overseas. So it's really successful and uh, we measure our success by our performance indicators that we have, you know, the number of products going overseas, the market access impediments that we have resolved, as well as trying to put in place, you know, uh, certain uh, trade standardization like HACCP, uh, organic, fair trade, as in Sugarcane in the Northern Division. We are working now in the Western Division, trying to come to fair trade certify uh, that Sugarcane uh, area. So these are some of the successes that we have come up so far, and that will boost uh, you know, our spread uh, into other areas of production and marketing. Now to how ginger is processed into delectable goodies like the popular ginger lollies. When ginger has been harvested, Farmers bring their produce here to the factory. It is thoroughly washed and graded through this mechanical filter. During the ginger intake in, from January to March every year, the farmers deliver the ginger here, and sometimes we send our truck too to the village to bring the ginger here. And uh, it's gonna wash through all the um, ginger washer, and uh, wash away all the mud, the skin, the root. Then we put on the um, conveyor to grate the ginger and then the clean ginger will put it in those pools. Ginger is a seasonal plant. You can only harvest the herb in February and March. So Kaming has built these water pools and using citrus acid, he preserves the ginger for year-round production. Ginger can be stored in these pools for up to two years. The thing is ginger is seasonal. So we can only take the ginger in February and March while the ginger is still baby, still less fiber. This is the only ginger we will be used to make the confectionery ginger, like a crystallized uh, syrup ginger. So during uh, January to March, we have to buy all the ginger and uh, keep it in the pool for our whole year use. And uh, whenever we need this to process, then we'll take it out and wash it again, and then we'll cut it. This is the where the lady is there cutting the you know, ginger from. And so it turns white, doesn't it? Just because of all the uh, chemicals and the, yeah, the, the preservatives? The, yes, the preservatives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the salt and the citric acid. Citric acid is going to keep the ginger white. Keep it white. And citric acid helps to preserve it for how long normally? Uh, the citric acid together with salt can keep the ginger for about two years. And. Uh, and it's going to maintain this ginger in this color for, you know, for, for long. Mm. Yeah. Can I smell it? Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Still this smells ginger, fresh. Yeah. The next stage is dicing the ginger into various shapes and sizes. It's either diced up into these premium size or into round dices like these. And trust me, it's not as easy as it may look. It's an acquired skill that takes time to master. It's going to take me about uh, nearly a month. Then I start working. Kamin tests his products every day in the lab to ensure it has the right amount of preservatives and is of high quality. We every day will do around 20 30 tests on the uh, sulfur, on the salt, on the uh, pH, and the invert, and uh, other bricks. So, all these kind of tests to, to control the quality of the ginger. Mm. This includes the varieties of ginger lollies that are processed for exports 
and he has special reason to venture out into ginger confectionery. The card from the outside, the grated, then it's going to be put in the, those tanks to do the syruping, put the sugar coating, and then when the, when the syrup is down, it's going to go through the aroma over there and then get crystallized. Yeah. And so, you know, venturing out into confectionery, why did you see that, you know, being potential diversification of your business? You know, this is uh, what are we always talking about is the venue chain. Eh? Like uh, semi processing or fresh processing always got a nice venue added. So we always like to do the end products, you know, like confectionery or those things. So that's added the venue. So how are these ginger lollies made? After pasteurization, then it's gonna go to the Yoruba there to get the products coated. And then it's going to our dry room. From drying room to the packing room. Now here's the fun part, the sugar coating process. After pasteurize, you're gonna go through the Europa to get the uh, the sugar coated, crystallized, then from the conveyor it's gonna go into the drying room. So the ginger needs to be a few days to get it dried properly, then we can keep it, it won't get wet. The ginger confectionery is then sorted out in this temperature controlled room and placed in different trays for export to various countries. So this is the final products. After get it crystallized in, in the processing room, it's will be here in this control room to get the humidity out and then this ginger will be done, dry and it will be packed, put it in the packing room. I can see that there are different types. I mean, these are more round shaped dices as opposed yeah, to Yeah, that's the different premium. products. Yeah, this is the diced ginger, this is the sliced ginger. Yeah. Yeah. At different places they go, I mean, yeah. are, are they of different quality? Uh, the quality is the same, but only the shape. The clients, they want a different shape. So mainly this one they use for the, in the chocolate uh, factory. Yeah, they kind of coat the chocolate on the, on the top. So it's an amazing product. And here's the final product. This shipment is now on its way to the US. American company, the Ginger People, are wholesalers of the Fiji made product. Uh, we started the export from the year 2006. Our sales is only around uh, 600,000 at the first year. But with the times going on, we, we found our sales is uh, you know, increasing, particularly you know, like with the help with the uh, government, with the help with the uh, European Union Act, FACT. We, our facilities you know, get updated. So this helps us to achieve uh, you know, like the total sales, particularly in the export, you know, increased a lot in the past years. For farmers who wish to venture out into ginger cultivation, Kaming has this advice. Particularly with this ginger, we advise the farmers to try to sign a contract with the exporters. We have the market, but you know the the uh, farmers have to know what's the total you know volume you know like we we will have. We may take from the farmers. Not over planted, not planted too less, couldn't, you know, to meet the demand. So we also may have to get the Ministry of Agriculture you know, to involved to get the farmers, you know, educated. Other than otherwise, some year we may get less supply, some year we may get oversupply. This is all not good, you know, for, for the market. We need a steady supply according to the demand overseas. The farmers have to seek the technical advice from the Ministry of Agriculture. And also, I noticed that I act is assisting farmers on this, you know, how to plant ginger, how to plant disease-free ginger, you know, to meet the export demand. So this is things what we, we, we like the farmers to learn. When you plant, plant good stuff. And that's all for this week. For questions or comments, do email us, talkbusiness at fijitv.com.fj. Remember, you can view what you've just seen on our website. That's www.fijitv.info and follow the links to Talk Business. Thank you for joining us. Do join us again at the same time next week. Until then, have a productive week.